So I say Joe Calzaghe's number two. Because what I've seen was phenomenal mm. when he when he was. Yeah, and you've seen that up close. Tell us a bit about, obviously... I've seen Joe since I was like People a might not realise that, that you know him well, inside not, out and well, boxing-wise, you know. We're, we're, not, we're not like... Um, in love with each other, well. like that. but I've known Joe since I was since I was young. No, we not we weren't the best of friends and stuff. But no, I, but you know, I I've always admired him as a schoolboy and stuff. And and his, obviously I, I knew his dad really well. I, you know, his dad said to me, his dad said to me actually another one who said a nice thing to me after the, the it was 1992 at the ABAs, and he said, you got you got one of the best rhythms that I've ever seen. Like you know, he, he brought some smoke up my backside a little. But I understand that. But it's just the fact that he said it. This yeah. is what, and Enzo wasn't revered as a great trainer back then. You know, he was he was an amateur trainer who, had, who happened to have a son who was winning everything. Yeah. You know, but no one was saying, "I'll oh, oh, go and join Enzo." But I, I always thought that was well. You didn't have to say that. He went out of his way to come up to me and said, "Listen, you, your rhythm is just beautiful, and that's one of the best I've seen. Just really good rhythm. Like it's like a South American type movement, and it's great." And um, I said, oh, "Thanks." And that was really nice. But um, but Joe was stand out from but when I first saw him. I have to say though, right, Joe lost his first um, tilt at a Welsh ABA championship. And I've never done that. <laughs> I've never lost a Welsh championship. So by that, just stop there. Yeah. Don't go any further with your career. No. And just by that Do alone. That's the real quiz. If we're talking about stats, I'm better than him. <laughs> So maybe I should be. You should have been. Well, I'm maybe guessing I you're number, number one. Two. I'm guessing you're number one. Well, I should be number one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, number one, I? But yeah, but he was brilliant. Even but even when he lost against Michael Smythe, he was brilliant. Yeah. For a round really? and a half. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was brilliant. Michael Smythe was just um, just so physically strong and a real man. And Joe was just still a boy, and just all hustled him, in the mm. end, which is a great win for Michael Smythe, who could fight as a pro himself, of course, mm. British level, but he, he was as a welterweight. But even then, even in defeat. Joe was like Sugar Leonard in the first, I mean the movement and the and the the, the lightning punch combination punches he threw off in that Welsh ABA final in nineteen ninety would have been was just unbelievable stuff. Like he was fantastic. He just ran out of steam because the guy was just too big and strong for him. So he just knack he was knackered. Mm. He had to put everything into it in the first round and just blew out the steam. But then after that, he was untouchable. I think he lost I think his last fight he lost was after that he went to the European Juniors where he got beat by I think it was a Romanian, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Again, I went to the European Juniors Never and I picked lost. up a silver medal. Yeah. So by that stop, we just stop it there. I mean, again, you're two 0 up. Minute, I'm a better fighter than Joe again. Yeah. Two 0 up. Two 0 Two 0 up. Yeah. But I mean, as a as <laughs> he, sort of, he sort of clawed it back then. He did a little career. bit. I mean, his professional career was obviously incredible, undefeated, amazing nights. The one, obviously, the sort of jewel in the crown that everyone goes back to is the Jeff Lacey night. But then, obviously, he went up to light, light heavy and did did the business there against two unbelievable names and yes. which have aged as yeah, well. The, yeah, the Jones. I don't, I don't like. I was there for them. Yeah, I was there for them. I mean, the American for both of those fights and and the Jones fight was a great fight to yeah. watch, by the way. And he and he and he, he played with Jones in the end, but that wasn't the right. Joe and Joe knows that. That was he just wanted to be in in, in the ring with an all time great. Mm. He made the mistake, Joe. He should have boxed Kelly Pavlik if that was on the table. Because he would have stood Pelly, Kelly Pavlik on his head, got paid maybe more, and got all the recognition. Mm. But his, but again, people forget Joe was thirty six at the time. His hands, hands were, were gone. His yeah. hands were shot to pieces, and he didn't want to take that risk of losing. I think he got that stage of his career now that he thought, "I'm so close now to just finishing." He didn't want to. He didn't care about being forty nine fifty. I mean, he probably did, but his body couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. But uh, the Hopkins fight, you no know, Hopkins after that went yeah. on and schooled. P- Kelly Pavlik. Yeah. No, the, the, that win, that win in terms of w- wins that got better over time, w- one of yeah, the best ones. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And the Kessler win was the, his best his best win. Yeah. The Kessler wins his best win. Could he box a Kessler there? I know, like, Frotch and stuff, people will go out and go, oh, no, Kessler wasn't right for the fight and all that. And maybe. But then tell me a fight was at a perfect camp and I'll show you a liar. Mm. And like, Kessler was, that was the best Kessler we've ever seen, by the way. Yeah, he was right in the right he in the there. groove. Then he, he boxed. He, I remember Joe took took a bit of an umbrage to it. I said, I felt sorry. I, I spoke to Joe after the fight. I said, I felt really sorry for Kessler because he boxed the perfect fight to beat you, <laughs> and it wasn't enough. Yeah, it just wasn't. He just enough. always had a bit more, didn't he, Joe? Whatever happened after, like what was it, three or four rounds? He looked in trouble, and he just changed the whole pattern of a fight. Now, at the, for that magnitude and that, well, for that was bigger. That was the biggest fight in the division at the time. For that, for what that fight meant, at that level, 
you know, with, with every little bit, every little mistake you get, you know, you, you, you pay for and you can't afford to make, do anything wrong to change the pattern of a fight in any fight, but do it at that level. Takes a great fight. Is that is that takes a great fight? In, yeah. Is that natural? Something. All Joe. Joe's is all natural. Yeah. This is it's, him and his dad were a perfect team, and he was like he was begged and and almost harassed to go to another trainer, and maybe you no. Know, and you look at it logically, it seemed that you should go to a new trainer. Another, you go to an experienced trainer who will show you things that you that you don't do and you know, tied you up a little bit better, and you'll be a better fighter for it. You throw too many punches. If you rather than throw fifteen punches, if you just throw six. There was, there was, you know, you can punch your weight. You'll be knocking people out left, right, and center. But they work together. But everything was natural with Joe. Like Joe used to move around the body, around the target, in little movements. I don't think he knew what he was doing. He just did it naturally. So when you throw back, see, if someone throws at you, and you're see, under pressure. You know, you literally, if you just follow that punch back, you land where he is. So you can almost just like you know, just punch off a guy's punch. Yeah. If you like. Just base it off yeah. that. Yeah. But because Joe moves a little bit every time. Just a little increments every time. He's not. He's even though he's in front of you, he's just over to the side, to the right, or to the left, and you. So you have to turn your body a little bit. It's like getting your foot on the outside of a southpaw. Mm. Southpaw, wasn't he? Getting your foot outside is because of that. So you, so you don't have to turn so much to to throw the punch, and he does, and you can catch him through the middle. And he'd always move. He'd move it ever so slightly around the round the body, meaning it was hard to fire back against. And he can continue. And he'd throwing. still be throwing. Yeah, because yeah, there was nothing coming back. After, after. A bit like what Usyk does now. Yeah. yeah same and moves. Lomachenko. Does yeah, of course. Yeah. But they they make it obvious. You can see them. Yeah. <laughs> No, because they do it beautifully, but they made, they, made, they made big movements. But Joe's were little, you almost couldn't see it. And I don't think he knew he was doing it. Just a God-given gift. Mm. And a God-given, you know, it's, your, your gifts are your gifts. Mm. And a vision to see it. But I used to say to Joe, for, for a long time, like I, used, I used to talk to him like I knew more than him. <laughs> Ridiculous. But I used to say, if you don't try and knock everyone out in the first two rounds, you stop everyone in eight rounds. Because uh, he used to try so hard in those, those defences to just because he was boxing people who weren't good enough to be with him, he try and ru he'd try and run right through them, and then they'd be scrappy affairs. Remember, they had some real scrappy fights and they weren't great to watch. And he's thinking, if you just took your time a bit, then you stop safe. He boxed a fella from Georgia, and uh, in Europe, not in America, <laughs> the country, Atlanta, Georgia, country, yeah, the country, <laughs> Georgia. And uh, I forget his name, Murchikun or something like that. And um, I said, that's how you should box everybody. Because he, he was a real strong guy. He wasn't great, but he was a really big, thick-set, strong lump, you know, with a head bigger than his shoulders. And Joe just boxed him. You speed, speed, bit of power, speed, speed, bit of power. Confused him, confused him, confused him, then destroyed him. And he stopped him in eight rounds, I think, ironically. I think it was eight or nine rounds. And I just, after that, I went, that's, that's it. Do that to everyone. If, you'd be David on the planet if you, do, if you box like that. So... I'm not. I don't take credit for his career. Well, after I'd that. make that three 0 to you, mate. But there was a big change in. Like, I don't want like a percentage of your wages. <laughs> no, I don't know if I could sue. Can I sue for, for loss we'll of earnings? A, we'll I don't know, but I just I, I do think I'm spitting a lot. By the way, I just honestly <laughs> spit everywhere. I'm so angry. Yeah, go Kazagi. Human. Anyway, Joe's my number two. <laughs>